Okay. How did you solve this question? Was it straightforward or some challenge? I want to know this piece. Anyone will tell me what to do. Assume the answer. Sorry, assume the answer. Oh, like that, yeah. That's a good approach. Guess the answer. Okay. And what else can be done? Tell me how to solve it. I am sure you would have done it like before. So, what is the approach you took? The GMAT reads this question as an 800 level problem. Although this is a 200 level problem, if you can just see through the trick. There is hardly anything in this question. 10 seconds you know the answer. But, yeah, it is rated as one of the really challenging problems. Okay. You know they are similar triangles or not first? So, L1 square by L2 square will give me which value? Square numbers, that is it. Choose this answer and move on. Ratio of two figures A1 by A2 is what? L1 square by L2 square. So, there is only one option with square numbers. You could have chosen this. That is one way to look at this one. Yeah, because there is nothing that is given to you that is irrational. So, you can use that thing. For sure, this will be one way. The other way, I will just tell you what all ways can we think about. So, one way is A1 by A2 is L1 square by L2 square. So, only two numbers 16 and 9 are squares. Other numbers are not pairs of squares. So, this can be one approach. If you are not sure why this approach should work, then you should ask yourself, if this is 60 and this is 12, are these irrational numbers or rational numbers? So, that means my square roots have to be rational only. It will not be possible that one side is root 3 and the perimeter is 60. Right? It is not possible that way. One this, the other way to look at this problem is, let us see. this is 12 and this angle is 90, this angle is 90. 12 is part of two right angle triangles. How can 12 be part of two right angle triangles? So, what all values can I have? So, I have the most basic triangle as 3, 4, 5. If I multiply this by 4, I will get 12, 16, 20. And the above triangle is bigger, so let us call it 12, 16, 20. We are just doing it in trial right now. If I multiply this by 3, I will get, so make it 9 and 15, 9, 12, 15. So, your double checking is, is the perimeter 60 right now or not. So, if I take 15 plus 20 plus 25, it is exactly 60. That means, this is the division, clear. In this case, we multiplied by 4. In this case, we multiplied by 3. So, what should be the ratio of area? The ratio of sides is 4 is to 3. So, area ratio should be 4 square to 16 to 9. This is another way to look at it. Multiply one side by 4, multiply the other side by 3 and you are getting the ratio of area. The side ratio here is clearly 4 is to 3. So, the area ratio each of these 12 by 9 is 4 by 3, 16 by 12 is 4 by 3, 20 by 15 is 4 by 3. So, the sides are in the ratio 4 is to 3 areas have to be in the ratio 16 is to 9. That is the other approach. If not this, then there are other approaches as well. It is not just the end of it. What could be the other approach? Let us see. Yes, yes. That is what I am coming to. Let us see the third approach. So easy if you can just think. If this is H, this is M, this is N. The area of one triangle is half of H M and the other triangle is half of H and Y. So, what will be the area ratio? M by N and I know what is M into N and what is that going to be? H square is how much? 12 square that is 
which multiplication gives you 144 16 into 9 is 144 what do you need m by n and you know m n there is a third approach h is given as 12 so h square is 144 so m into n should be 144 and m by n just look at m by n 3 into 2 is not 144 etc etc you know that now. so the most plausible answer is 16 by 9 ok that is one way if you want to solve this question by the conventional approach it will actually take you as much time and you will realize it is an 800 level problem then it is tough but yeah there is another way I have just told you three different ways you can think about it.